Hi guys, in this video we're going to have a look at how we solve equa equations using the balance method. Okay, so I've done another video of solving equations using the flow chart. This is just a different way of solving equations. It tends to be for um, people taking higher, um, but depends on your personal preference. Why is it called the balance method? Well, if we look here, we've got a left-hand side equals the right hand side. We call it the balance method because whatever I do to the left hand side, I have to do exactly the same thing to the right hand side. So both remain balanced. Okay, so that's where it gets its name from. Now when it comes to solving equations, remember, I'm just trying to work out the value of x. I'm trying to work out what number is represented by x. Now to do that, I want to get x on its own to so my end game is x equals something, a number, I don't know what it is. Okay, so at the minute, x is on the left-hand side. I want to get rid of everything else apart from x. So what have I got? I've got 3x, which means I'm doing 3 times x, and of course, I've got a plus 4. Now, to get x on its own, the first step you need to do is I always leave the x alone until the very end, and I get rid of everything else. So I'm going to get rid of this plus 4. To do that, I just do the opposite, and obviously the opposite of plus 4 is minus 4. So I minus 4, and just like I said, using the balance method, I do that to both sides. So what am I left with? On the left-hand side, I'm just left with 3x, because obviously plus 4, take away 4, gets rid of it. That's why we do it. And on this side, 25, take away 4, obviously leaves me with 21. Now I'm just left with the 3x, and as I said a minute ago, 3x just means 3 times x. Again, I do the opposite. So I do the opposite, which is dividing by 3, and again, to both sides. So 3x divided by 3 is obviously x. 21 divided by 3 is obviously 7. Okay, that's my answer. Don't forget to check it. These are questions here you should be so thankful when they come up in the exam because you can leave it knowing you've got it right. So all we do is test it. We put 7 back into here. 3 times 7 is 21, plus 4 is 25. Happy days. You can rest assured that you have those marks safe and secure. Let's have a look at some slightly trickier ones. So this one here, I've got x divided by 3 take away 4 equals 10. Exactly the same process. X is tied up with that divide by 3. I'm going to leave it for now and just deal with this number here. This time I uh, up here I plus 4 and I did the opposite and took away 4. Here it's minus 4 so I'm going to do the opposite and plus 4 again to both sides so they're balanced. They still stay balanced. So what am I left with? I'm going to have X divided by 3 still. They're going to cancel out, and that equals 10 plus 4, which is obviously 14. Okay, now I now want to deal with this divide by 3. Again, I do the opposite, so I times by 3 both sides, and therefore x divided by 3, but times by 3 leads me with x, happy days. 14 times 3, well 10 times 3 is 30, 4 times 3 is 12, add them together, we have 42. Okay, and again, you can substitute that back into there and check it works. This one up here, ever so slightly different. Here, x was divided by 3. Over here, x plus 5 is actually all being divided uh, by 6 in this particular case. So you have to be a little bit careful. To solve this one, over here, I got rid of the numbers. Over here, I can't take away 5. Why? Because as I just said, the whole thing is being divided by 6. So I can't do anything until I get rid of that 6. So to do that, well, it currently is dividing by 6. I do the opposite. So I times both sides by 6. Notice how I'm laying this out. I'm letting do my instructions each time. Just here, I'm showing the examiner every time what I'm doing. So as I said, times by 6. So the left-hand side, I have x plus 5, and then 7 times 6, 42. And now what do I do? Well, it's very similar to what we had up there. I just want to get rid of that 5. I can do that now because there's nothing holding me back. So I just take away 5 
from both sides leaves me with x equals 37. And again, you can substitute that back into there and check it. So 37 plus 5 is obviously 42. 42 divided by 6 is 7. Again, you can just check it's right. Okay, always worth doing. Now, when you've got a bracket, there are different ways you can do it. But if I'll be honest, the easiest way and to avoid awkward numbers and bits and pieces like that, you're better off just expanding it. So I'm just going to quickly expand this. So 4x and minus 3. And I've, done, I've done a video on expanding brackets. If you're unsure, you can go and have a look at that. 4 times x, 4x. 4 times minus 3. Well, 4 times 3 is 12, so 4 times minus 3 must be minus 12. There we go. I've just expanded it. So I'm just going to put that in there. So 4x minus 12 equals 18. And I'm then going to solve this, and it's exactly the same, really and truly, as solving my very first example. I'm going to leave the x tied up with the 4 there, get rid of that number by doing the opposite, which is obviously plus 12 in this case. That leaves me with 4x equals 30, and then divide by 4 both sides, keeping it balanced. So 4x divided by 4 is obviously x, which is what we're after. Now, when you get something like this where it's not a whole number, you're more, well, yeah, they're more than happy for you to leave it as a fraction. So in this case, 30 divided by 4. But I would always try and simplify it. And if you can, put it as a decimal. So obviously this one I can simplify to be uh, 15 over 2 by dividing both top and bottom by 2. And then just doing 15 divided by 2 is a half of 15 is obviously 7.5. Okay, you can leave it as a fraction, but obviously ones like that, I would definitely tend to try and simplify them and put them in a decimal if you can. So there's some basic ones there. They're exactly the same questions as my flowchart one, so hopefully you can see the difference between the two. And I'm just going to flip over here and we're going to have a look at some slightly more interesting ones that add an extra step. So, in this particular one here, I have a 5x and I have a 3x. So in this case, I have x's on both sides. Now, the first thing to do is get rid of the smallest one. So in this case, the 3x is the smaller one. Always get rid of the smaller one. You can do it another way around, but then you start dealing with negatives and it gets a bit messy and, uh, yeah, there's no need to. So find the smallest one, get rid of it. Currently it's plus 3x, so to get rid of it, I minus 3x. Again, to both sides, so it remains balanced. So 5x minus 3x leaves me with 2x. Obviously I've still got my minus 2, can't forget about that. 3x minus 3x is nothing, that's why we uh, did it. And obviously I'm left with 18. And again, this is just like my very first example. Leave the 2x alone, just deal with the number first. So plus 2x to both sides to get rid of it. That leaves me with 2x equals 20. Nice and easy now. 2x, so 2 times x, do the opposite, divide by 2. Again, to both sides. So x equals 10. Happy days. Finally, a very common mistake here is they look at this and you go, OK, I've got 4x there, 2x there. Clearly the 2x is the smaller one. You've got to be a bit careful. Minus 4x is clearly smaller than the 2. So just be very careful if they try and trip you up the negative. That is definitely the smaller one out of the 2x's. To get rid of it, well, it's minus 4x. Do the opposite. So I add 4x again to both sides. That's going to leave me with minus 6 on that side equals uh, 6x plus 18. So I've got a bit of a negative going on here, but that's not a problem. And the x is on this side. Again, not a problem. Some people go, oh, I've done it wrong, x is on this side. No, it doesn't matter. Either way, you can swap it around if you wish or just leave it as it is. Either way, the steps are the same. I want to get rid of that number. I want to get rid of 18. So I'm going to take away 18 from both sides, or well, minus 6, take away another 18, that's going to be minus 24. I'm on minus 6, I go down another 18, I'm going to be on minus 24. That equals 6x. Again, I want to get rid of that 6, it's currently times in, 
So I'll do the opposite and divide both sides by 6. So minus 24 divided by 6. Well, think about it. 24 divided by 6 is 4. So minus 24 divided by 6 must be minus 4. And obviously 6x divided by 6 leaves us with x. So again, that is our answer there. And just like with the other ones, you can substitute your answers back in and test them. We'll do it this one because 10 is much nicer and easier and quicker. 5 times 10 is 50. Take away 2 is 48. On this side, let's have a look at this one. 3 times 10 is 30, plus 18 is 48, and obviously 48 equals 48. So again, you can check these ones just by working out the left-hand side and the right-hand side. So that's a few uh, um, questions and examples using the balance method. Hopefully it helps, guys. Cheers.